What's up guys, it's Eventon here, and I know this has been a heavily requested video by you guys doing some ninja wormhole gas mining. And to be honest, it's been a while since I've actually done some of the uh, like wormhole mining and all that stuff myself. So I actually kind of had to relearn it, um, get used to some of the wormhole mechanics again, because I have do been doing some, but uh, it's, it's just been a while. And I think the whole term like ninja mining comes from the idea is that you enter a wormhole, you harvest the gas and you get out and no one even knows you're there, kind of like a ninja. Uh, whether the wormhole is occupied or not, but the whole point is just to be able to get in, harvest the gas as quickly as possible, and get out um, as soon as you can as well. So this is a really good skill, or I should say a really good play style for you guys, whether you're Alpha or Omega. Um, the, only th the only really big difference between the two is that Omega accounts are able to have like some modules that are upgraded and just be slightly more efficient, but it's nothing too massive, at least in my opinion. Uh, for some of you alpha players, this is a really easy way to make a lot of isk, but there is one big caveat to like gas mining that I will say. So if you actually open up your uh, skill planner here, I even blew up the UI just so it's easier for you guys to see. Uh, I don't play on these kind of settings. That's a, that's a bit ridiculous for me. But uh, looking at the gas cloud harvesting, so my character does have it maxed out. But if you right click it, and the only way you can learn this skill is actually by buying the skill book. And right now, um, and you can't get these from NPC stations as far as I know is that this will cost you about 36 million is 36 to 38 million i'm not sure what the market's going to look like by the time you see this video but you can buy it for a bit cheaper by putting up a buy order but this the barrier to entry of this isk wise is pretty high but once you learn the skill it's pretty easy to to actually get it skilled up so it doesn't take that long um by any means so i will say that so if you are brand new you will have to have a bit of isk on hand in order to to get started and just to kind of jump into like what my profit was uh, this took me about an hour worth of mining. So that's, and just to keep in mind, it's, that's an hour worth of actually mining the gas, not like that doesn't include flying around and scanning all the sites and stuff like that. So I think that's one thing that a lot of, uh, videos kind of mistaken is that like, oh, you'll make, you know, 150 million isk in 15 minutes, but they don't show you the 45 minutes worth of scanning and all that stuff behind the scenes. So with this, um, the estimated balance, all this stuff is a bit skewed just because the industry changes. Right now, being able to do some gas cloud harvesting could be very profitable. So even though the estimated price only says 23 million, which is still a pretty decent amount, um, if you actually look at it here, like the prices have really skyrocketed and they've been pretty volatile over the last uh, uh, week and a half or so, just because of the, in the industry uh, announcements, meaning that more of the higher end ships are going to require this type of gas from wormholes. And so the, the price point for this, like a lot of the prices on these are probably about 25% higher than what they actually mean. And I even pulled up some of the uh, market. Well, I was going to actually sell these originally. So if you actually put these up, and I barely like undercut some of the prices here. So I put that up for 37.9. So I barely kind of undercut here. Same thing with the Fuller Right uh, C50. Um, I was undercutting here just by a little bit. Will some people buy it? Maybe. But as you can see, one basically one um, cargo hold, or I should say ore hold worth of a venture can get you, I would say, at, mask, at max, at probably about like 55 million. And my character doesn't have that great of. Uh, um, like marketing skills, but if you just wanted to instantly sell it, I mean, getting 25 million, that's half the price, but at least you don't have to wait around for it. Uh, that's still a pretty decent amount as well. So essentially you're almost paying off the skill book with, with one, uh, or hold worth of adventure. So I think that's a pretty good outcome if you're a new bro. And for some of you guys, 25 mil an hour, uh, it's really, really good, especially if you're new to the game, uh, like I mentioned. So, uh, one other thing I did want to show, which is maybe not. Actually, I changed my mind. We'll go ahead and jump into the fits. All right, we'll go ahead and look at the fits. And I actually have two for you guys just to kind of show you the different schools of thought when it comes to gas mining in a venture out in wormholes. Um, really, you only need three things at the end of the day. You just need the gas harvester, the venture, as well as the core probe launcher. Everything else is pretty much just personal preference. Um, I call this the cowboy miner, and it's kind of a long story, but long story short, I... I've been trying to get the whole recording and this includes editing and stuff. It took me like 15 hours like for this video and I could not find gas sites for like the longest time and I was getting frustrated and eventually I died to a saber and that just added more frustration to it. So at some point I was like, all right, I'm not even sure this is worth it. It's just like, I'm not even playing the game at this point. I'm just like trying to get through the content, which is why I sometimes tend to speak quickly because I'm just trying to get through it as fast as I can. Because um, if I don't, it'll just take up multiple days to get this stuff done. Long story short, I was like, how can I keep myself motivated and kind of keep it fun and lighthearted? And I thought about doing more of a, a Southern theme, kind of like a cowboy, because around these parts, we don't really believe in ninjas. And at the end of the day, we know that cowboys are way cooler than ninjas anyway. But I ended up deciding against it and just kind of just rolling through it. But regardless, 
Uh, this first fit here, the Cowboy Miner, um, we have a small gravity capacitor upgrade ones here, and that just helps increases our scan strength. Easier to scan sites, we turn them off. You'll notice that it's going down as we turn them off. We turn them back on, they go up. Um, gas harvester ones, obviously that's an alpha thing. Um, if you have Omega, obviously try and shoot for gas cloud harvester twos because you will mine, uh, or should say harvest 50% faster, which is a pretty big deal. Mid slot, you can pick any micro warp drive you want. And I saw these enduring sensor boosters like on another fit. And I'm like, what the heck are these used for? So, and I saw that they had these uh, ECCM scripts, which is kind of nice. I just wanted to show you guys this as an option if you're not sure like what else to put in the mid slot. Um, this basically makes you harder to get scan scanned down by combat probes, which is kind of cool if, like, if you're like hanging out in your safe spot or if you are gas huffing and they don't have like um, core probe launchers to scan you down, you can actually see these. But at the end of the day, as long as you use your D scan more than once every like 25 seconds, like you should see the, the probes around you and you should know that danger's around and you should either just warp out or at least just keep your eyes peeled uh, in case you do, they do show up. So um, that's just an option. I don't necessarily recommend it. Uh, the, the type D restrained nanofiber structure, that's just to help get your align time. Um, I think the goal is to try and shoot below five seconds and increase your max velocity. If you do need to use a... Um, Inertial stabilizer to get sub five seconds, I would recommend that as well. Uh, the second school of thought, or I should say kind of like the second fit, the highs and the rigs are the exact same, so is the micro warp drive. Uh, I just put in some shield extenders here, so I put a medium and a small, that just gives us more tank. Because when we did get uh, ganked, it was by a saber. And I think if we had a little bit of extra tank in addition to this um, warp core stabilizer, I think we might have been able to survive. Not 100% certain, but I think there was a high likelihood. Plus, uh, on top of that, some of the gas sites are already occupied by like sentry towers. They're like the ordinary sites. You do not want to warp to those. I will show you guys some of the websites they use to figure out like which sites are good and dangerous and this and that. Um, but I, I just warped there just for the heck of it at 100 just to see like, hey, let's just see what happens. Like how much damage are these sentry towers really doing? Um, if I did not have these extenders, I definitely would have gotten one shot. So these extenders definitely help you out if you're newer or if you accidentally warp to one of those uh, ordinary sites. This will kind of give you a cushion or uh, give you the option to at least survive uh, the initial volley. And again, the warp core stabilizer, by default, the Venture already has a plus two uh, warp core strength. So what that means is that they need to basically use a faction scram to lock you down. So they have to have something that's three or higher. But because we have a warp core stabilizer, um, a faction scram won't cut it. We can still warp away just fine. They would actually have to dedicate two mid slots to lock us down. So they'd have to have a faction scram and a disruptor or two of the T2 um, scrams in order to lock you down, which I'm not sure too many gankers would actually dedicate two mid slots to being able to lock down ships. Usually a faction scram is enough. And in the drone bay, I forgot to cover it the other fit, but in the drone bay, we just have two Hornet EC300s. That's just to help break the lock. Um, there's really no point in using like combat drones because we're too small and too weak to fight anything that's wormhole related. All right, now finally the in-game footage. And I will say you have to be very careful when you do scan down these wormholes out in like high sec region, especially in and around like uh, Kaldari space, because if you do warp to these sites and you're like not paying attention, there can be Triglavian ships there ready to kill you if you don't have the proper standings for them. So uh, I have the proper standings, so they're not attacking me. But if I did warp in here, some of these sites did have Triglavians sitting right on the warping spot. So uh, just be careful when you're warping into the uh, wormhole spots. It won't tell you whether it's Triglavian or not, um, you just got to be careful. And when you do find a wormhole, one of the first things you want to do uh, when you're sitting right in front of it is to right click it and go to show info. Uh, right there in the middle of the description, it'll say the wormhole leads to, you know, high security space, low, null. Um, what you're looking for is unknown parts of space or the uh, unknown parts of dangerous space or like dangerous parts of space. I forgot what that terminology is exactly. Um, that wording, the only really difference is that the unknown parts of space leads you to a C1 through C3 wormhole, which is arguably, you know, safer. Honestly, if you're in a wormhole, anything and everything can kill you, especially players. I think that's the most dangerous part. But the dangerous parts of space are basically a C4 through C6, which I don't really think affects us. That really is only for like combat sites, um, exploration sites, things like that. Not so much gas sites, as far as I know. All right, so you find a wormhole and you enter through it. And there's really two things you need to do pretty much immediately when you go through. And I did not do it, uh, at least not in the right order or not fast enough. So when you immediately go through, you want to click, right click on that wormhole icon that you just went through. 
and save location. So that way you don't have to scan it down and you can land right on top of it when you do warp back. So right now I'm like de-scanning. I think I'm trying to figure out like where I'm positioned at in the system. And like I said before, I had to kind of relearn all this stuff. So I'm a bit slower than I usually am. Um, so now I finally did it. I click save location. Um, and the second thing you want to do is just warp to any celestial body. It doesn't matter. Like as you get more advanced, you can find out which ones positionally make the most sense. But um, as you're doing that, so I start warping to a planet. And what you want to do is what's called a safe spot. So right here, I click control E. It brings up that menu. You can click add location. And then you click submit while you're like mid warp, like while you're traveling to the other location. So this way you're kind of like in a middle part um, in space. And the only way they can find you is with combat probes. Um, as you'll notice in the top right, there's like a little tiny menu. Uh, that's like your local bookmark. So if you actually press L, it'll bring up like a tiny menu of your local bookmarks. So that way you can kind of find them very easily. You don't have to right click in space and go to uh, the, the local bookmarks that you have. So that's a really easy way to find it. So I warp to the planet. I warp back to my safe spot. And now at this point, now I'm safe. I'm not sitting on uh, a celestial body. I'm not sitting next to the wormhole um, entrance or exit. Now I feel relatively safe. I'm descanning. I'm just making sure I'm not getting uh, probe scanned either. And as you can see, this is what happens when you just take way too long. I spent about 30 seconds on the other side of this wormhole knowing that there's people hunting me down for some reason. Um, I was descanning in that last uh, system and there was a, a Saber as well as a Helios, both with the same name. So it's probably an alt account or a similar court member. They were obviously hunting down ships and I spent way too long just chilling here. Um, ideally, if you can get on grid, grid with them or if you find out what their name is, you can look them up on Z Killboard. But I just took way too long here. What I should have done is immediately warp to the sun or just warp to any celestial body. And if you're pretty quick as you're warping off or as you're engaging warp, you can actually save the wormhole exit as you're going out. So I think that's how I would imagine the really good wormholers do it. But uh, as you can see here, I was not paying attention to, to local or at least my overview. A saber's on grid. I start immediately heading back, uh, approaching. Uh, I can't activate my micro warp drive because he's scramming me. If I had that warp core stabilizer, I would have made it. So this is actually the first fit and I died in. Um, I think I could have made it jump through the, the wormhole, but I was not clicking um, jump through. I was clicking approach. So that was a bit of a mess up there as well. But again, I mean, this was like hour one of me getting back into wormholing and uh, something I'm just not familiar with. And so I thought he was going to let me live here, just troll me. But this is the event where implants drop. So he decided to kill me. So this is something I just wanted to show you guys that, um, yeah, wormholes are a dangerous space. And um, but it's not that big of a deal because the nice thing is you can just saddle up and and another venture and you can actually make all of your isk back in, in one load of uh, of gas mining. So it's not that big of a deal, a bit of an annoyance, but it's a, a lesson learned. Now I know to warp off immediately. And I wanted to show you guys this part right here briefly, because if you warp to a uh, wormhole directly or if you go through like your D scan menu and not to your bookmark, you'll land probably about uh, anywhere between eight to five kilometers away, which is more than enough time for someone to uh, decloak and lock you and, and scram you and all that kind of stuff, which is dangerous, which is why if you warp to your bookmark directly, you're going to end up right on top of the wormhole and be able to enter through it uh, immediately. So whenever you warp to your wormhole, um, or to a wormhole, make sure you go to your bookmark and not to through like the, the D scan menu, uh, like I'm going to show right here. Because if you go through there, you're always going to end up further away. So you scan down a gas site and now what? Uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure, first and foremost, that is not an ordinary site. If it is an ordinary site, it is very dangerous. There are sentry towers there that will shoot you immediately uh, when you get there. So it is not safe. Uh, take a look at the description. I did link a eveuniversity.org site that has all the gas site information. It tells you how long it takes before this stuff spawns, what spawns, all that kind of stuff. But just for the sake of the video, I'm like, how dangerous are these turrets really? So I warped 100 kilometers off and immediately warp off. Um, I almost end up getting one shot here. So I ended up taking about 1,000 damage immediately. If I would have hung out there for another second or two, I definitely would have died. All right, but let's say you do find a gas site that isn't ordinary. We actually found one pretty early here, which we got pretty lucky on. Uh, there was a ton of anomalies, or I should say uh, cosmic signatures um, in this system, and we actually found one pretty early. And instead of to keep scanning around just to see, um, you know, if we, if we can find potentially a better gas site, because there are kind of like different levels of gas sites, you could say. Um, what I did was I just ended up warping there and started gas huffing. And while I was doing that, I was... Um, scanning down the other uh, cosmic signatures in the meantime. So we don't want to waste any time. We always want to be huffing something. And the size sizable perimeter um, sites aren't that bad. Um, what you can do, and typically what I do, is I just look up 
um, on the Fuzzworks, which is also a link down in the description below. You can actually find out which of the gas lights give you more gas. So you can look between, hey, is the C50 or the C60 gonna give me more, you know, ISK for my time or whatever it is. You can organize it by ISK by venture, ISK by meters. And as you can see here in my overview, I have both of these different types of uh, gas clouds. I immediately start he heading for the uh, C50s because that's what's paying out the most on the market right now. And one quick tip, if you do have a lot of anomalies, you can actually click on that little filter down arrow like I just did and just um, filter out all of the uh, like local cosmic anomalies. So we don't really care about the combat sites or any of like the, the mining sites. All we care about is the gas sites that we have to scan down anyway for it to, to show up. All right, so we find a site and we start huffing. So first thing is that these uh, gas harvesters, you need to be like really close, like within 1500 meters to, to harvest them. So if you do wanna orbit it, uh, don't have your micro warp drive on because it'll actually push you outside of that range just from like the sheer inertia. Um, some of the guides I've read said, hey, you need to get in a tight orbit of 500 meters. And theoretically, it's supposed to make you harder to get scanned down by like combat probes, but your D-scan should help with that. Or if someone is warping on top of you or if they decloak like right next to you, uh, you'll be moving and by the time they decloak or they're able to lock you, you should be further away. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the whole orbit thing because as you can see in the top right, I already have the sun pre-selected. I'm already ready to warp out in case something does show up. Um, I don't like the idea of orbiting because half the time if you're heading towards the sun, you're going to be able to instantaneously hit warp. That's awesome. But then the other half of the time, if you're orbiting away from the sun, like if your back is like towards the sun, it's going to take you twice as long to actually stop, turn around and start heading um, towards the sun just because the way your inertia is moving. So I typically like to just sit there and just not move. I know it sounds weird, but with the way align time and all that kind of stuff works and just forward momentum, um, it's in my opinion, it's better to do this. And I actually have a video coming out somewhat soonish talking about align times and some of the misconceptions, but this is the way I prefer to do it. And uh, especially since we have a warp core stabilizer, I'm not too, I'm not too worried about getting locked down. Also, be sure to descan frequently. You'll see how quickly this ship pops up in a way. So I already scanned down the Proteus on my descan, which is a T3 uh, tactical cruiser. And these guys can go cloak if they're fit properly. But as you can see, that guy was on descan for about six seconds. <laughs> so if you're not descanning frequently, I already know immediately I'm not alone. So I need to see to kind of uh, keep my eyes peeled, keep descanning. And if I was not descanning as frequently as I was, I could have easily missed that ship and known I'm not alone. At this point, the Proteus is combat scanning me down like with combat probes um let's see there's a pacifier there uh it's on d scan for less than three seconds i was kind of hoping the Proteus would show up and uh i would try and show you guys how effective having a plus three warp core strength is uh and just escaping in general i was kind of hoping to see that in action and kind of show you guys but more combat probes started showing up i think even a little bit later and astero shows up as well and once i saw the name wingspan i figured i would try and i was probably going to get surrounded at any point so uh, i didn't want to take the chance and i ended up just warping off to live another day but before i warped off i just made sure that my gas harvester is finished you could always turn them off before you warp off so that way you at least get some of the gas but if you go out of range and the cycle finishes you just don't get any gas for it and if it's not players, definitely the local NPCs will bully you out of the cloud. Uh, I believe it's anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. It could be longer where they randomly spawn and will kind of kick you out. I actually like to harvest the gas cloud on the opposite side, furthest away from the entry point. So that way it buys you some time to get away. And that's pretty much it, guys. I just want to thank you guys for uh, all of the support and some of the ideas I've gotten recently in some of my videos um, as well. It's really helped me out, even though there are times where I do get frustrated uh, with the game or sometimes making these videos that do take me a while. Uh, you guys do motivate me at the end of the day to kind of help finish it and uh, get the information out to you guys. And I love making these kind of guides for you guys um, at the end of the day. So I will throw up on the screen uh, at least kind of like my 10 steps or the order of operations, kind of just the general overview. Uh, I know it might seem like a lot, but I'll put them down in the description as well. So you guys can like copy it and put it on a notepad or anything like that you guys might want to do. But it's just a general overview. There's some steps I might have skipped. There's some more nuanced things, but it's kind of just the general idea of when it comes to uh, ninja gas harvesting and wormholes. Um, and things like that. So again, I just want to thank you guys for the support. And I for totally forgot that I was doing a giveaway for the stuff. So if you guys lasted to the end of the video, I appreciate it. Um, I will be giving away two of the brand new Mahler Scope Syndication skins that I got yesterday. Um, I'll be giving two of those uh, away as well. So I need your guys' in-game name. And if you guys learn anything new about uh, gas harvesting, are you guys going to mine as a Alpha or an Omega? What kind of ship do you want to use? Um, is there anything new that you learned or is there anything that I missed? I would love to hear all that stuff down in the comments below as well. So hope you guys take care. And of course, you fly safe.